In the last video, I introduced the term race condition. Uh, if you think about it, literally, threads 0, 1, and 2 are coming out of the gate, just like a bunch of horses. Dun 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 Sorry for the pathetic singing. But that's what's really going on. I start all those threads up, and they all come in here. You know, here's thread 0, and here's thread 1, and 1, and here's thread 2, and dun 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 And they all see, oh, oh, there's a number on the queue. The count's not 0. i got to get in here. And they all say DQ at the same time, roughly, and only one of them gets the number. The rest blow up. They get the exception from the queue. All right, and the way I got around that, or I, I fixed that, is, is uh, I put this lock in here. All right. Now remember, the lock here turns into the monitor dot enter monitor dot exit call, which basically says only one thread can have the lock on that object at any time. Okay, so let's illustrate what happens when the lock's on there. Thread zero, thread one, thread two, they all still wake up. They start churning in here. But only one of them is able to grab the lock. Let's say thread zero grabs the lock. So they get in here. Well, threads one and two, they have to wait. They're just like, oh, oh, I'm stuck at the door. i got to get in here. And they can't. Not until thread zero decides to yield its lock, uh, which will happen here at the closing curly of the lock statement block here. All right? So, so that's why the lock fixes it, is thread zero gets in here. He does his work. And then he gets out right here. And when he's out, then threads 1 and 2, they can wake up and say, oh, oh, is there anything to consume? Oh, thread 0 already grabbed that number. You know, there's the numbers dot count is 0, so we better not do all this work. They basically skip over this entire block of code. And they go and they, they check their while loop. And they just, all these threads are, th are, are fighting over the lock. Now, I want to show you something. Uh, there's a problem with this lock. All right, the lock is too big. Look at all this code I locked. What is the danger zone? Out of all this code, what is the danger zone? And think think about it. Pause the video, but also think about um, how how when you're dancing with somebody on the floor, if you've got siblings and you're sharing toys, what is the shared data? So who's accessing the shared data where? So what exactly is the danger zone? Pause the video, think about that. Okay, coming back here. I'm going to click on numbers here. Numbers is the shared data. It's our queue. It's the thing that it's it's here. I'll even draw it out here. Four, one, nine, seven, two. Here's here's our queue. The producing thread is throwing numbers onto this, and the consuming threads are trying to pull numbers off of this queue. That's the shared data. Now, when I click on numbers, you see the highlights here. Visual Studio, a nice little tool. You can see the highlights. Lock numbers. If numbers not count not zero, DQ. But really, once I've done the DQ, once I'm done DQing my number, I've got my number. Right? And I just need to sum it. And I need to need to do some logging as well, right here. But but I've got my number. I've I'm done accessing this the shared queue between the all the threads. I really don't need the lock from here on down. Okay, this lock is way too big. Alright? It's kinda like I went into the bathroom stall. I lock the door. I use the bathroom. I, I, that's that's what we do. We are courteous and we do whatever we need to do in there. But then when I'm done, I start talking on my cell phone. All right? I'm done using the stall. You're outside doing the potty dance, and I'm standing there, or I'm sitting there, I guess, using my cell phone, being extremely extremely obnoxious. All right? So I shouldn't be hogging the lock down here. That's abs absolutely poor manners. So I'm gonna reduce the size of the lock to exactly what we need. I'm going to get rid of this try catch. We don't need it anymore. It was just a debugging trick I used so we could we could figure out what the problem is. And then um let's see. We're done. Let's see. Number numbers here. We use once we do Okay, right here is where we're, we are done with the lock. So, how how can I get creative here? I can't really put a closing curly there cuz I need this closing curly to end up, end up right there. So, I'm going to actually say num to sum. We'll put it right there. Num to sum. I'll just say num to sum. We'll initialize it to zero to make the compiler happy. If numbers dot count is not zero, actually we'll initialize it to negative one because I know it's going to be a positive number. Uh, if numbers dot count is not zero, num to sum uh, numbers dq, and then add the number right here. Okay, so we don't we don't really need the lock past this. Once we've done the dq, now I got curlies in the wrong spots. Control K D. Uh, format that a little bit. Okay, so my sum, num to sum. So let's go here. I'm going to move num to sum here. And again, this 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 is still kind of poor logic what I'm doing here, but we're getting better, 
we're getting better. I'm going to say if num to sum is not negative 1. I know if I get a number off the queue, it's going to be positive. All right, so that's why I initialized it to a negative number. I'm going to say, hey, basically, if num to sum, if I got a number to sum, then let's sum it and let's also log it as well. Otherwise, we'll just go and try to get another number. And we're going to churn and burn, wasting all this time again. All right, so, so again, we're still poor man's way, but I've reduced the lock here. I'm not sitting on the toilet using my cell phone while you're doing the potty dance outside. Uh, I've I got in, I got I did my business, and I got out. All right, num. That's a good rule to keep in your head. Key concept: your thread locks. It gets in. It gets out. All right. There we go. Let's run this. Just to make sure this works here. It looks like it's running just fine. Um, producing threads, throwing some numbers on. The consumers are grabbing them. They're off, obviously churning up my CPU power and consuming some of the power here in the building. Done. Total is 41. Very good. If I run it again, we should get uh, 41 because we did the hard-coded seed here. Uh, well, actually, <laughs> we may or may not get 41. I'll talk about that in a different video, but but I think for the most part in these videos we will see 41 just simply because I'm doing so much sleeping in this uh, example.